Okay, so I got a little message that I uh, titled "Forgiveness: A Command and a Gift." It's both. So as as we come to the end of the year 2023, I realize that the older I get, the faster time passes. Every single year, and, and you know that's true. Then I. The older I get, it seems like every year it just passes so fast. I, I remember when I was young, I used to I used to wait, and I said, "Man, I, I can't wait till next year comes by." And it seems like forever till Christmas gets here again, <laughs> like a little kid. Remember? But now, it, now it just it just goes by so fast. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I also keep remembering what God did for us, sending His only Son, as a ransom for our sins. That's unbelievable what He did for us. And when you think about it, what He did for us, uh, because when, before He came, those saints lived before us. They didn't have Jesus. What happened to those saints? Remember? It's not until Jesus came back, he went on the way down there and, and broke the, uh, the chains and, and opened the doors so they could be free. So now we don't have to do that. Now we can go straight and he can, his blood can erase all the sins. And we sin again, what happens? We, we pray and we. Uh, ask for forgiveness for the sins and Jesus is able to forgive us and to free us from those sins again. Isn't that great? I mean, I think about those things then and I just, it makes me feel so joyful to know that. So it is about this forgiveness and the unforgiveness that we sometimes harbor in our hearts against each other that this message is about. The message I'm going to about to talk about. A lot of you guys um, are making resolutions today about uh, maybe uh, lose weight, maybe uh, be a better person in the next year. But these resolutions, if you don't make it between you and God, they don't, they're not going to do you any good. If you just make these resolutions just to yourself. You're probably going to break them, you know, in the next few days. So having said that, in Mark 11, 24, 26, the Bible warns, and, the, and, the, and, the, and I'm going to put that up there on the, so you can see it. Mark 11, 24, 26. And the Bible warns us, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And whenever you stay praying, or stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. That's pretty troubling. I mean, when you when you have somebody and you keep them anything against you in your heart, think about that. Think about, about what the Bible says about it, what God says about it, because that's that's very scary. And that's what this message is going to be all about, about what the Bible says about. We keep something about somebody biblically what God is telling us. Not to keep that in your heart. So I hope you listen today. And I hope that you're watching on television. And you're listening. Please listen to this warning. In today's culture, most people don't mean half of what they say. So, 
Is there any wonder we had difficult time knowing when to take a person at his or her word? But when Jesus speaks, he speaks with authority. When Jesus says something, he means it. He has authority to speak to us. So every red letter you see in the Bible, he is speaking with authority. So pay attention to what he says. He is faithful even when we are faithless. He speaks at a level of truth and integrity that transcends our culture or society. So when Jesus said, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you trespasses. He meant it. He wasn't joking. To take it one step further, he does not say they just once in the Bible, but many times. He was emphasizing the importance of this warning. Let's look at some statements he made on different occasions. In Luke 6.37, he said, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. You catch it now, where I'm going with this? Again, in the Lord's Prayer, we read, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Matthew 6, 12. Because some forgiveness is so rampant in, our, in today's culture as well as in our churches. We want to make sure that we take this words of Jesus very seriously. Truth does not change. The way we will forgive, release, and restore another person is the way we will be forgiven. In Matthew 8, 21, 22, Jesus uncovers further light on the bondage of unforgiveness. Bondage of unforgiveness. He teaches the disciples how to be reconciled with a person who offended them. Watch this. Pay attention. Peter asks, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Up to seven times? Look what Peter is saying. Peter thought he was being generous. But he received a shocking reply. Jesus totally blew away what Peter considered generous. I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. In other words, forgive as God does without limits. Now in Romans 12, 18, the Bible says, If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. You can't do that. You can't do anything about, about the other person, but as far as it's possible for you, with the help of God, try to live at peace with everyone. Of course, as long as we continue to live in the, this flawed body, we will continue to sin. But we can feel assured there is forgiveness according to what the Bible states in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all sin. And that, as long as we live in this body, be sure that we will continue to sin. All of us. This body here you know, and sometimes it's sinning, not it's just by thought, just by thinking. We're in church sometimes, and, and this thoughts come into our minds, and we don't know where they came from. But if we think a little bit, we probably we do realize where they come from. We have an enemy that's ready to bounce, to pounce against us all the time. We have received forgiveness from God 
And we all know that. If you are saved, and you know that you're saved, you remember where you came from. You remember where you used to live. Right there in that hole. And Jesus extended his hand and pulled you out. And pulled you out from that dirt, from the mud, from the dirt that you used to live. And now you live in this place where God is always helping you. Therefore, we must extend that forgiveness. It has been said, forgiveness is a nice thing until we find ourselves in that predicament. Having to forgive somebody. A survey has been made of 75% of people that receive forgiveness. Only about 52% were able to reciprocate forgiveness back to others. It's easy to keep it in. And sometimes it feels so good to keep it in. And sometimes we think that's the way we need to live. But it's not. We need to get rid of that guiltiness in our hearts. We get hurt in life and we hurt other people. And in order to help each other in this area, we need to learn to apologize and learn to ask for forgiveness. You may say, but Pastor Al, you don't know what people have done to me. And of course I don't know. You're the only one. But I can give you a good reason to forgive. God commands it. Listen to this in Colossians 3.13. The Bible tells us, vary with one another and forgiven one another. If anyone has to complain against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Let me remind you, failing to forgive can bring you your prayer life to a screeching halt. So you may pray all you want, but if you have something inside of you, God may have problems Listening to you. Unless you clean all that junk inside of you. First. Isn't that sobering? Isn't that kind of a bringing something into your heart and saying, wow, I never realized that. And I've been living a life like this. Keeping all this against somebody else. Wow. I didn't know God was like that. I thought God was all love. Yeah, that is all love. But He loves you also. And He wants the best for you. So He wants to get rid of all the stuff so you can have a better life. <clears throat> Mark eleven twenty five, And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive it, that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. Bottom line, when it comes to forgive, it must be done. We cannot fool God. We fool ourselves, maybe. This deal of forgiveness could be really hard, particularly during Christmas season and during New Year's season. Among family members, when you think about it, there have been so many problems, but also so many reconciliations during this time. You know, My mother had a problem forgiving my father for many years because of the way my father was when they were young in their marriage. Uh, 
He used to drink a lot, my father. And he used to lose uh, conscience of what he was doing. And I think he used to be harsh with my mother. And she started keeping that inside. And later on in life, she wouldn't, uh, she would hardly spoke to him. And uh, through the years, she would just, she wouldn't forgive him. She just wouldn't forgive him. And when he came, he got cancer, she, she just uh, didn't want to forgive him. And she was almost dying. And, and I talked to her and I said, Mom, she keeps dying. Well, I can't I can talk to him. He did too. He did all this stuff to me, and I just can't forgive him. She had all this stuff in her heart against my dad. And even when she was dying, the same thing, cancer. I, I spoke to her, and I said, Mom, you need to do it. You need to forgive my dad. She was still bitter against my dad. And I, uh, I spoke to her, and she finally, when she was getting close to dying, she finally released all that stuff. And she felt much better. All that stuff has to come out. It needs to come out. You can't live a life with all the stuff inside of you. I can't live a life like that. I don't know about you, but we, all of us need to do that in order to have a better life. Forgiven also means to forget the events that hurt us in the past. But forgetting is almost impossible. You notice that? I mean, you may forgive, but forgetting is almost hard. Almost, it's almost impossible to forget things unless God intercedes in our lives. You know, ter- uh, Terry Timbun. What was the name? Yeah, Corey Tambun. He said one time that God can take those sins and throw them away uh, as the east is afar from the west. And the sea of forgiveness. And also, she said, no fishing allowed at the end. <laughs> yeah. And forget, forgetting is almost impossible unless we allow God to help us deal with that situation. In Romans twelve nineteen, the Bible tells us, Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay says the Lord. He's the only one. We, we think we, we can do these things on our own, but it's not ours. We, we don't, we're not judges. God does, does not give us that ability to do that. You know, we, we want to do those things, but God does, did not give us the authority to do that. Only God can do that. He's the one that formed us. He's the one that made us. And He's the one that has the authority to do that, to be the judge. There are many words used in the Bible that refer to forgiveness. And the meaning of this word is to release, to let go. Another word to use, used to describe forgiveness is canceling. That's when canceling a debt. You have a debt and you cancel that, it's all done. It's the same thing when you forgive somebody. You cancel that debt. But it needs to be canceled eternally. Not say it with your mouth and words only. It has to come out from here. Okay. My friends, for those of you who are married and you want to marry 
marriage that is happy, that is prosperous, you need to be good at apologizing. You need to be good at apologizing. You can just do that and forget to apologize when you you have a problem with your mates. You need to apologize. <laughs> no, John, I'm not. I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking in general. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking in general, okay? <laughs> you need to be good at apologizing and asking for forgiveness, okay? <laughs> as well as to forgive. <laughs> to withhold forgiveness can be harmful. Not only to the person we are to forgive, but also to ourselves. It could be dangerous to keep that in for ourselves also. We are to forgive, but also to ourselves. It has been said many times, when I forgive someone, I can set a prisoner free. And that prisoner is myself. Okay? To withhold forgiveness could be detrimental both spiritually and physically. One study was done among people who had problems problems forgiving others, and it was found out that these people were taking more medication than people who had no problems forgiving others. You hear that? Those people that were ready to forgive others, they had no no problem. They were taking no medication whatsoever. But people that were keeping forgiveness from others were taking more medication. Honestly, if we want to, if we want to save money and want to be healthier and happier, learn to forgive. But most importantly, is that we are obedient to our God. That's the most important reason. The greatest example we have in the Bible of forgiveness is in Luke 23, 34, where Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. He was on the cross, remember? He was on the cross, hanging, bleeding, almost dead. And yet, he was forgiven all of those that were there crucifying him. And yet he said, forgive them. For they do not what they do. Do you find yourself in those situations sometimes where people offended you? Where people say things about you sometimes? And you forgive him? Or do you just fight back? The, this passage reminds us of the terrible cruelty that was inflicted on our Lord. And yet, he turned to his father, asking him not to take into account the punishment they put him through. Did those Roman soldiers deserve forgiveness? No, but he gave it anyway. Another another example is the life of Joseph in the Bible. We are well acquainted with the story of his life. We also know that he went through many trials, but he wasn't alone. Remember? He was sold into slavery and all that. God was with him during all those trials. So when God caused the famine throughout the world, his brothers came to Egypt to buy fruit. When Joseph saw them, he could have taken revenge for what they did, but instead he forgave them. We read in Genesis 45, 4 and 5, where the Bible explains what Joseph says. 
And Joseph said, Please come near me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, who, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourself because you saw me here. For God sent me for you to preserve life. And you know the story. You know about Joseph. You know what he went through. All the stories he went through. And yet, when he saw his brothers, he started weeping. He forgave them. And that's just all the stories that for us to see and to take that into consideration for our lives and to learn how we need to be in this life. Because we're in this life for only a short amount of time. We're here for now, but tomorrow, we don't even know we have tomorrow. Or how many more days we may have. We may be gone. And we'll be right in front of God. And we probably don't need to explain our lives to Him because He knows. Okay? And I hope each one of us here, as I see your faces, are going to the place, same place I'm going. And that is to be with my Lord for eternity. But if you don't feel like you are, you can see one of us pastors after this message. And we can have a talk with you. Because there is a way to know for sure. The life of Joseph could be a reminder, a reminder for all of us who put our trust in Jesus Christ that in spite of the circumstances, He is always there to protect us and to guide us. Because God is sovereign. When we say God is sovereign, we mean to say that God is in control of all circumstances. Even when we don't feel He is, He is still in control. And if He is in control of all circumstances, why does He allow some situations that are painful in our life? And I believe it is because His plans are better than our plans. Even when we don't believe that, He does. And He is guiding us. Guiding us. Even though we see pain in front of us, He is going right with us through that pain. Remember that. We're not alone. We're never alone. He's right there with us all along. But sometimes our sight is shallow. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the call according to His purpose. And you know, that's a good verse. Almost everybody knows that verse. All of you probably know that verse because it's very famous. And the first part is good. It says, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. But the second part, just pay attention. The second part, to those who are the call according to His purpose. Are you the call according to His purpose? That's a good question. So as we continue to speak about forgiveness, is there anyone in your life that has caused you much pain? Someone that when you hear the name of that person, your temperature rises. And it makes you angry. And maybe you want to see them hurt. I used to be that way. I used to hear the name of some people, and when I heard their names, 
I just feel like I was you know, I'm just one and the worst for them. But I hope you're not like that today. We're about to get a new year coming. And think about this. Think about this. God is always present. God is with us all the time. You can't fool God. And if you want to change in your life, this will be a good way to start a change in your life. And ask God to change your heart, to change it. So that's not forgiveness if you start thinking that way. Forgiveness is letting go and never bring it back again. That's forgiveness. Forgiveness is not saying, well, I'll forgive you, and then tomorrow, bring it back again. We should not wait to feel forgiveness. We should not just extend it as an act of obedience and faith. Our God, our God will help us do it. Because we and ourselves don't have it. We need to get God to come and help us do those things. He's the only one that can help us. We, in our human nature, we don't have that ability. God has to come. And remember, if you stay, the Holy Spirit already lives in you. He is in you. He can help you. Take advantage of that. Ask Him to help you. And all circumstances. His nature. You, the Bible says that you can acquire His nature. The nature of God. What is the nature of God? It's totally different than our nature. For Christ, our nature... And our nature is a terrible nature. We were born with a bad nature. It's not until Jesus came that he changed his nature into a, a holy nature. Brought us from this, this darkness into the light. And that's where we are right now, supposedly. But sometimes the enemy comes and tries to pull us from this uh, light that we live in and bring us back into the darkness. And sometimes we agree to do that until we re- reflect. We have those reflexes and say, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Can do that. Enemy can do that. Who wins? You know, at the end, who's going to win? But sometimes the enemy wants to try us back. I know myself sometimes. I know my nature. I know, I know sometimes Satan wants to bring me back. And, and sometimes I, I agree for a little few more minutes and few moments, and I have to wake myself up. I say, what am I doing? It's like chapter 7 of Romans. The things that I don't want to do, I do. Like Paul was saying, right? So we shall not wait to feel forgiveness. We shall extend it as an act of obedience and faith. They may never accept my apology, but that is their issue, not mine. So forgiveness is not excusing the wrong actions of the person we need to forgive. That's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is not forgiveness does not change past actions. And forgiveness is not a feeling. It's a decision. <clears throat> 
So I wonder if you came here this morning and you feel that there is a barrier between you and God. Maybe it's the fact that you haven't forgiven somebody. Maybe you've sinned and feel guilty. God can forgive you right now from that sin and throw it into the sea of forgetfulness. Like Corey Ten Boom said, never to be remembered again. When God tells us to love our enemies, He gives us along with the command, the love we need it. Matthew 5, 43 and 45. You have heard that it was said. But it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully, spitefully use you and persecute you. Tell that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes the sun rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. So I'm closing. So this morning, if you have somebody that is keeping you prisoner because of unforgiveness, do not allow another day to go by and ask God to help you deal with it. Do not allow Satan to rob you of your peace and your forgiveness from the Lord. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say this prayer. And pray after me. Okay? Lord Jesus, I repent for holding our forgiveness against that person. And, and, and if you have somebody in your mind, just say, say it to yourself. Against that person. I use the scars. Left by the wounds formed by, by that event as an instrument to heal my body, soul, and spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.